Hi guys, and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to set up a cloud-based development environment, set up Visual Studio Code with the remote SSH extension so we can connect up to that virtual machine and do our development in the cloud. And then we'll get the Docker engine installed. We'll make sure that pip is installed so that we can install modules from the Python package index. So if you head over to pypi.org here, that is where the Docker Py project is hosted. So if you just search for Docker here, it's version 4.4.4. And I think it actually is still technically published under the old version docker-py. I actually got caught by this where I installed this old version and a bunch of functionality was missing and I was trying to figure out why it was missing. And you'll notice that this older docker-py is version 1.10.6 and it was published way back in 2016. So that is pretty old at this point. So you're going to want to look for just the Docker module right here. And so we'll get that installed on our dev system, along with all the VS Code extensions that help us to be more productive as Python developers. And then we'll jump into starting to actually automate the Docker engine. So let's go ahead and jump into the EC2 console over here for starters. And we'll go ahead and get our EC2 instance set up. So if you don't have an AWS account, you can go ahead and sign up for one. Uh, you're also welcome to use other VPS providers out there or just a local VM. I just like to use AWS because it's fairly easy to spin up compute services here. And I can also just destroy them whenever I need to and not have to worry about paying for them long term. So for my Amazon machine image, I'm going to go ahead and choose a pretty common Linux distribution here, Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS Focal Fossa. Uh, this is kind of my go-to choice for Linux distributions just because it's very well supported and it just works great in AWS. So next I need to choose an instance type and this will allow me to access different virtual CPUs and memory resources here. So I'm not going to need something that's super powerful so maybe I'll go with something like a T3 small here. The T3 series of instances is the kind of burstable kind of entry level EC2 instances and so they have a lower price point than some of the much larger and more expensive EC2 instances like the C5s or the R5s and there's tons of different EC2 instance types available in AWS here. So let's go ahead and just choose the T3 small for now and then I'm going to choose this little option right here that allows me to request spot instances and if you're not familiar with spot instances it's basically a way for you to save on your hourly spend in AWS with a caveat that AWS can actually reclaim that compute capacity and interrupt your interrupt your workload. So just be aware of that when you choose request spot instances. I've typically found it to be pretty reliable, but it is always a chance that AWS could reclaim your EC2 instance capacity at any point to reallocate to a customer who's either got a reserved instance or is willing to pay full price. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and make sure that I have a public IP address assigned to my EC2 instance here so that I can SSH into it from across the internet. And then for our storage over here, I don't need tons of storage. However, depending on what kind of container images you are working with in Docker, you might need some additional storage so that you can pull larger container images. So you might want to bump that up to something like 15 or 20 gigabytes just to make sure you've got some spare capacity. And then over here under our security group, the security group you can kind of think of like a firewall rule almost in the sense that basically the, fire, the security group is going to allow traffic into your EC2 instance from out on the internet. So you'll want to make sure that you choose a security group in which you can SSH into your EC2 instance from across the internet. So I've already got a security group rule that's set up here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose to launch this instance. And then I have an SSH key pair that I can use. Uh, so I've already imported the public key into AWS and I have my private key locally so that I can SSH into this instance. And so I'll just choose launch instances. And this will take just a second to spin up. Actually, one of the things about AWS is that their EC2 instances, even the smaller size ones, are actually available in pretty short order. So they don't take too long to spin up and it's just a really nice service to get compute capacity right when you need it. All right, so now we've got this EC2 instance running, and so what we're going to do is go ahead and find the public IP address of it, and this will allow us to SSH into it from Microsoft Visual Studio Code. So let's, get, let's go ahead and fire up VS Code right here. So I've got a brand new VS Code window here, 
and you'll notice that it looks a little bit different from the default. That's just because I have a custom theme applied. So if I hit Control K, Control T, you can see I've got a whole list of custom themes installed. I'd encourage you to go out to the marketplace for Visual Studio Code and check out some of the cool themes out there. I happen to like some of the th Synthwave th themes, so I use this one called Outrun Night. It's got kind of a nice purpley glow to it. And what we want to do is make sure that we go over to the extension marketplace here, and we're going to need to grab the SSH extension for VS Code. And this is the extension that will allow us to connect our local VS Code that's running on our dev system up to our compute service in AWS. This is really nice if you just are maybe running Windows or Mac and you want to spin up a Linux virtual machine up in the cloud and then do your development on that remote VM, but still have the benefits of doing all your text editing locally on your dev system. All right, so that's one extension. And then the other extensions we're actually going to install after we connect to the EC2 instance. So let's go ahead and hit F1, or you can hit Control Shift P in VS Code to open up your command palette. And then we'll go ahead and just add a new SSH host. So I'll run SSH and then Ubuntu at the public IPv4 address that we copied from the console. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that to my SSH config file. And then if we hit F1 again and just choose connect current window to host, or you can search for that command as well, just search for connect and it should come up. And then we'll go ahead and choose that remote IPv4 address that we're connecting to. And of course, we need to choose Linux for the target OS and accept the SSH daemon's fingerprint. And then we'll get connected. So now that we're connected into that remote EC2 instance, we need to make sure that we have a few tools installed. So first of all, we need to make sure we have the Python extension installed. So if we just search the extension marketplace for Python here, we can click install in SSH and get that installed in the remote environment. You can actually install extensions for VS Code locally on your dev system. Plus, if you're using these remote extensions, you can actually install these extensions into the remote development environment. So that's what we're doing now. I'm also going to search for the Highlance extension here, and we'll just choose Install in SSH. And just so you know, we're not really going to be using it, but there is actually a Docker extension that you can install here as well. And this allows you to manage containers and things from your Visual Studio Code environment. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check that out. It'll actually just on the activity bar over here on the far left hand side, you'll see it adds this little Docker icon. And of course it's failing to connect because I don't have the Docker engine installed yet on the remote Linux virtual machine. But if I did, then it would be able to connect to it and be able to manage Docker containers. So that's just a convenience mechanism there as well. But like I said, we're not really gonna be focusing on using the Docker extension. So now I need to make sure that I install the Docker engine on my Ubuntu VM. And one of the things about VS Code that I really like as well is just the fact that it has this built-in terminal. So once I'm SSH'd into my remote host, I can just use this terminal here and run commands on that remote host instead of having to open up a separate terminal session. So I'll do a sudo apt update just to update my apt package caches. And then we'll go ahead and do a sudo apt-get install docker.io dash dash yes. And that'll make sure that we get the Docker engine itself installed. And then once the Docker engine is installed, we also need to install the Python 3 pip package manager that's used to install modules from the Python package index. And that's where we can install the Docker module from. So let's go ahead and let the Docker installation finish. And then we'll do a sudo uh, apt-get install python3 pip dash dash yes. And that'll make sure that we've got our pip package manager installed. And then we'll go ahead and install the Docker module from the Python package index, uh, also with pip. And then the last thing that we'll need to do as well is set up our permissions for the Docker daemon. So we need to make sure that we add our Ubuntu user to the Docker group so that we can access the Docker daemon using tools like the Docker CLI or, of course, this Docker module for Python. So let's go ahead and do a sudo user mod dash dash groups docker and then a dash dash append because we want to append that group to our user's current group configuration. And then we'll go ahead and plug in our username, which is of course Ubuntu. 
And I've noticed that even if you try to reload the VS Code window, it doesn't really seem to connect uh, and make the changes to my user. So I've actually had to do a sudo reboot to restart my EC2 instance. And then those changes typically take effect after the EC2 instance comes back up. Now you'll notice that VS Code eventually realizes that it is no longer connected to that remote instance. And so it'll pop up a window saying, hey, I can't connect, you know, I'm going to try to reconnect or, you know, you can click a button to reload window. Sure enough, you're complaining that it can't connect to that remote instance, but it only takes a second for it to reboot. So it'll come back up here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and hit reload window here and see if it's come back up yet. And sure enough, it looks like it's connected here and we have our shell on our remote system. So now let's just do a pip3 install docker and that'll get that docker module installed on our system. You'll just want to take note of the version number here and make sure that it closely corresponds to the latest release that we found over on the GitHub repository for DockerPy. So you'll notice that 444 is the latest release in March here. Or actually, I guess that would be late February. And so that's the one that we have installed locally on our dev system here. And so we should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the next video where we'll actually start using the APIs to connect to the Docker daemon and then list out some containers and pull container images and that kind of thing. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.